Just when we thought the insanity of last week's announcements were over, this is quickly becoming the most insane month in AI history. In today's video, we're going to look at the top AI stories and launches from this week, including Adobe's competitor to Midjourney, Runway releasing Gen 2 of their text-to-video AI, Apple exploring GPT tech in Siri, Google's response to ChatGPT launches, and OpenAI releasing research showing how badly AI will be replacing jobs. Hint, the highest paying jobs are all at risk. Stick around to the end where I show two incredible AI tools that you can use right now. One for text to video and another for 2D to 3D. Hey, my name is Matt Berman, let's get into it. So the first thing we're gonna be talking about today is Adobe's competitor to Midjourney. We all knew this was gonna come. Adobe is the premier name in anything having to do with photos, photo editing, videos, video editing. So Adobe's product is called Firefly and it is a direct competitor to Midjourney. So let's take a look at some of the examples that they show on the website. So in this first example, what they're showing off is something they're calling context aware image generation. And basically what it is, is you highlight a part of your image and you can type in the text prompt and it'll replace it with whatever that text prompt is. You can also expand the image, which you're seeing now. It's pretty cool. This reminds me of Leonardo.ai's canvas functionality. Essentially, you're able to expand the image using AI. Now, Leonardo's functionality still needs a lot of work to be usable, but this, if it's as good as what the demo is showing, is pretty darn impressive. Next, it looks like you can create custom vectors, brushes, textures, all from just a few words. And so you can imagine creating entire fonts just from descriptions in a prompt. In this example, Adobe showing off a competitor to Runway ML and their uh, text to video generation. With a few words, you can take an image and completely change the theme of it. So here what we're looking at is taking a video, describing something that you want changed about it, and then it spits it out immediately. So in this example, we're seeing a nice little log cabin and it's in the summer. And then they say, hey, show me a snowy scene. And then there it is. Here's an example of content creation for posters, banners, social posts, all with a really simple prompt. What I've seen other tools like Midjourney struggle with is actually being able to have comprehensible text in the image. Usually it's some like alien text, uh, but here it looks really, really good. And here's another example with 3D modeling. Effectively, what Adobe has done with Firefly is take the best tools from what has been launched already and put them all into one product called Firefly. And so what this allows you to do is turn simple 3D compositions into photorealistic images. And here's three more cool examples. The letter N made from green and red moss, the letter N made from gold with intricate ornaments, and the letter N made from red particles. And so if you wanna test this tool out, be sure to join the beta. I've already signed up, I don't have access yet. As soon as I do, I will make a video about it because this looks incredible. The next launch that happened this week is Gen 2 from Runway ML. Gen 1 was already incredible and now Gen 2 looks even better. Now it's very, very hard to get access to even Gen 1 still, even though Gen 2 is just announced. You have to not only apply, you have to join the Discord and just wait. Here's a few examples of what Gen 2 is capable of. So with a simple prompt, aerial drone footage of a mountain range, it creates a video completely new. This is not something that is based on something else. This is a completely new video created by AI. Absolutely amazing. Here's another example of text to video. The late afternoon sun peeking through the window of a New York City loft. You can see a lot of movement. You can see the sun glistening through the window. Really cool. And here's something else you could do. Text plus image to video. And so what this means is you have some kind of input image. You add a prompt to it and it takes that input image and makes it into an actual video. So in this example, here's an input image. The prompt is a low angle shot of a man walking down a street illuminated by neon signs of the bars around him. And there it is. And there we see it, full movement, snow coming down, lights, neon in the background, all of this completely generated by AI based on the image plus the prompt. Now you can see a little bit of artifacts in the eyes, you know, the, the face morphs a little bit as it's moving, but for early tech, this is really, really cool. Next is image to video. So here we just have an input image, a simple one of the beach with the city skyline in the background. And here 
we have the output video. You can see the clouds moving, you can see the waves moving, you can see people walking along the beach, the camera is panning out, lots of cool movement there. Next, we have stylization. So this is taking source video and applying some kind of style to it. Here's the source video, a single image as the style, and then it recreates the video in that style. So you can see this person is dancing and looks like it's you know some kind of volcanic superhero. Next, we have storyboard, which is turning mockups into fully stylized animated renders. So here I'm actually able to drag back and forth to see. So what they did was just use some runway notebooks, put it up to look like the outline of a city coming through with a camera. And if we look, there's the scene. That is very, very cool. You can see that each stack of books represents one of the skyscrapers. And then they also have masking. So you can say, take this video and now I want a dog with black spots and white fur. And there it is. So each frame is masked with that text prompt. Next, this is called render. So what this does is it takes untextured renders, what we're seeing in the bottom left here, and it makes it into realistic outputs by applying an input image or prompt. So here's the original video, untextured, and you can say man diving beneath the sea, and there it is. Again, you can see some issues with the hands, but this is still really incredible. And here's another really cool example of customization. And so if you wanna get access to Gen 2, go ahead, sign up, apply, join the Discord, and wait like the rest of us but I'm really looking forward to seeing this in action and playing with it. Next, if you're like me, Siri has become quite a disappointment lately. Other than being able to say, call my friend or set a timer for me, I don't really use it all that much. But imagine if you had the power of ChatGPT in Siri. There's no reason they couldn't have done that. I think they should have invested in OpenAI rather than Microsoft, but Microsoft beat them to the punch and they're gonna be much better off for it. But now Apple is starting to have rumors about their AI project and bringing GPT technology into Siri. Just imagine the possibilities where you can actually have ChatGPT voice interface in your pocket at all times. So here's a little article about it. And it says there's been a report in the New York Times that Apple engineers are actively looking into language generating AI similar to ChatGPT. The code name for it is Bobcat and it's already being tested in tvOS 16.4 beta. I find it very, very interesting that it's being tested in tvOS rather than iOS, but, but I have an Apple TV, so if they offer beta testing, alpha testing, I will be there. The next story we're gonna talk about today is BARD, Google's answer to ChatGPT. I know a lot of the AI releases by Google over the last month or so have been lackluster to say the least, but BARD looks really cool and they just released it. So you can sign up. I know people who already have access. I was a few hours late to join the wait list, so I might have to wait a little bit, but go ahead, join the wait list, but let's take a look at some of the examples that they show on the website. So it looks like an extremely similar interface to ChatGPT. There's an input box for prompting. It follows the Google design language. So here's an example. Brainstorm some ways to help me read 20 books this year. And here are some ways, and then it lists the ways. And I think it's funny that they actually have a Google it link at the bottom of the response. I'm not sure what they're thinking there. They're probably just a little bit afraid of their Google search dominance, but they put it in there anyways. And so about BARD, BARD is a large language model. It is based on a lightweight, an optimized version of Lambda. And so here, I think they're really trying to release this technology early because they're putting a lot of emphasis on LLMs not being always accurate. Here's a clear example on the homepage for BARD about large language models will not always get it right. Feedback from a wide range of experts and users will help BARD improve. So they're really trying to get it out there early and often, which I really appreciate. I think that's the right way to release artificial intelligence. Here's something interesting that ChatGPT doesn't do that Google Bard will do. It says, when using Bard, you'll often get the choice of a few different drafts of its response so you can pick the best starting point for you. That's really, really cool. So rather than just getting one output and having to wait, it's actually gonna provide you with three or more different outputs that you can choose from and then go from there. It's also important to note that unlike OpenAI, Google has its own hardware infrastructure already with Google Cloud. So they don't need to partner with a Microsoft Azure to actually power all of these large language models. 
So the performance might actually be better because they're building the hardware already from the ground up with these in mind. So if you want to give it a try, go to bard.google.com. I've already signed up, but add yourself to the wait list and you'll get the email when you're ready to get in. The next story I want to talk about is OpenAI really ramping up the discussions about how at risk so many jobs are because of AI. Sam Altman did an ABC interview and he talks about it, which I'll show that clip right here now. It is going to eliminate a lot of current jobs that's true we can make much better ones and so there he is talking about yeah a lot of jobs are going to be wiped out but there will be new ones we will see about it in addition to that interview OpenAI just yesterday released a research paper going into depth about the potential economic impact of large language models on a wide range of different jobs now Here's the paper. I started reading through it, as you can see, and highlighting some important parts. I'm gonna probably create another video exclusively exploring the topics discussed in this paper. I think a couple things to point out. Our findings indicate that approximately 80% of the US workforce could have at least 10% of their work tasks affected by the introduction of GPTs, while around 19% of workers may see at least 50% of their tasks impacted. And here's another quote that stood out to me. These trends suggest that LLMs may be capable of executing any task typically performed at a computer. So if you have a job where you sit in front of a computer, which I do and I've had my entire career, your job is potentially at risk. Now they also create a new rubric for measuring how exposed a potential job is to artificial intelligence. And they call it the exposure rubric. I've been reading through this it goes from E1, E2, E3, and E0, where E1 has direct exposure, E2 is exposure by LLM-powered applications, which means the LLM plus some kind of software on top of it. E3, exposure given image capabilities, and then E0, which is no exposure. The jobs that seem to have no exposure require a high degree of human interaction, reviewing visuals in detail, the use of hands or walking, so anything with building, decisions that might impact human livelihood. Although LLMs could do that job, they're probably saying they shouldn't be doing that job and collecting inputs to make a final decision. Again, LLMs could be doing it, but they're saying they should not be doing it. So keep an eye out. I'll release another video uh, really diving into the details of this research paper. Okay, let's get into the tools that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. The first one is a text to video tool that is available right now. It's at Hugging Face. I'll drop the link in the description below. It's called Modelscope Text to Video Synthesis. So let's try out an example, an astronaut riding a horse. It's a two second video. All of them are two second videos. And there it is. Now, now, if you have a keen eye, you could probably see a little bit of artifacts in the middle of the screen right here. One of the problems that this model has is it seems to be trained on Shutterstock images. That's what you're seeing here. It's, it's like a watermark of the Shutterstock logo. So they're probably gonna get in a little bit of trouble with that. I know Shutterstock and other stock image companies are extremely litigious. Let's look at another one though. Here's a panda eating bamboo on a rock. Now you can clearly see the Shutterstock logo right there. Let's go ahead and play it anyways. And there it is. One last example, Spider-Man is surfing. If you try to generate your own a lot of times right now, because this is so popular, you're gonna get an error. I'll show you what that looks like. So let's see dog riding a cow. There it is. Something went wrong. The application is too busy. Keep trying. So just try again at another time, but this is available to use immediately. I've gotten it to work a bunch of times. The last thing I wanna show off is a new paper coming out of Columbia University, and this is called Zero One to Three zero shot, one image to 3D objects. So essentially you give it a 2D picture and it's gonna convert it into a 3D object that you can manipulate. Here's an image of a car. Now we can actually change the angle. We'll generate a novel view and there it is, an angle of the car from underneath by just having this 2D image and nothing else. Let's do zoom. Zoomed out, let's try zooming in. Now I wanna see above the car and let's try changing the angle. There it is. So you can wrap around the car as much as you want. And this is all based on a single 2D image from one angle. And you could play around with this yourself immediately. So here's a shoe. We'll change the angle, generate the novel view. And there it is, different angle. Change the angle again. There it is. 
change the angle again. There it is. Here's a little bit of explanation of how it works. And here's something really cool. So this is actually how the 2D image gets reconstructed. So this is first the input image. This is the actual 3D view of the image. So this is probably a scan. And then this is using AI technology to actually generate the 3D view. Definitely not as crisp as the actual scan of the, the object, but still really, really good. So feel free to check this tool out. I'll drop the link in the descriptions below. So those are all the incredible tools just from the last two days, building on top of the incredible week we had last week. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe. And if you wanna see other videos about amazing AI tools, progress, news, anything, stick around. Those videos will appear right now.